Hello, you're with Echelon's series on reinvigorating Sri Lanka's economy. Now, Sri Lanka's tech sector's growth has outstripped many other areas of the economy over the last decade. One of the sector's most interesting companies is John Keel's IT. John Keel's IT is a unit of the larger John Keel's group, but it's also an independent services and product company. Joining us today is Ramesh Shanmuganathan, who is the chief executive of John Keel's IT. Ramesh also has a larger role within the John Keel's Holdings Group, where he is Group CIO and also an executive vice president. Ramesh, thanks for joining us. Uh, to start with Ramesh, how do you think the private sector can contribute to the economy at this juncture? You know, what can it be doing differently? So, I, mean, I think since 2009, since the peace dividend, I've seen most of the private sector has been pretty focused uh, in Sri Lanka, right? I think uh, one of the major shifts I think uh, which the private sector ought to be doing is looking at uh, exports aggressively. Sure. Right? Because if you today look at, uh, we are in this peril because uh, today we are importing close to about grossly about 20 to 22 million and exporting close to about 11 billion, right? And and we also importing a lot of stuff, which we ought to be kind of self-sufficient and maybe looking at markets to export, right? But that's where I feel uh, the private sector should be looking at really driving innovation, uh, looking at the next point of inflection in in all industries across across the country, right? Because I feel today garments, IT, uh, and certain certain agricultural products, right, in niche markets. So we are grossing about uh, Emily and garments leading the way at about five billion, right? So there's significant upside in terms of I feel uh, innovation and packaging in products and services, right? So today, uh, even if you take at the garment space, we are pretty much playing at the low end of the value chain, right? It's bodies, IT same, right? And if you look at even agricultural commodities, the same. So we need to look at value addition and innovation to drive the market. So that we really understand we have we have a, a very limited market in terms of our population and we got to look at exports as a key uh, way to grow our, our GDP. How should businesses adapt their long-term strategy in, uh, to suit a crisis like this? You know, is, is that something they should be doing or should, be, should they be doubling down, you think? So I think definitely, I feel uh, any crisis, I think the important aspect that one should focus on is build resiliency, right? First, you mm. need to survive. Sure. Right. So first, look at stemming down in terms of strengthening your your business, your your core, and then looking at uh, look at reimagining yourself in terms of the context which is evolving, right? Because I always uh, say that uh, in a crisis situation, is it's so dynamic. You don't know. It's like you're getting into a junction which has about 10, 10 uh, exits mm. which road you take mm. right so it's you can't be doing a lot of R&D taking because time is not at your uh, at your side and you need to also take some hard call certain gambles in terms of looking at what do I do right so that is where in a, in a, in a period of uncertainty it's also important for you to look at the past reflect and reimagine in terms okay what are my learnings mm. what can I really pivot on Right, and where do I see the opportunity, and where do I see that, uh, you know, return, which kind of would be far greater than what I've been achieving, right? So I think that uh, that is a kind of strategy I feel, which also needs a lot more forward thinking, and also maybe some bold bold uh, steps. Uh, and I think a lot of our businesses are not inclined to uh, take those uh, steps, and I think that's where we are. Probably, I guess, where we are. So, so let's narrow this down as we go. Um, now you're suggesting that no crisis is without its opportunity yes. and, and you come from the tech sector. So being where you are uh, as a leader in the tech sector, you know, what opportunities are you seeing here? So we see a, a significant kind of a opportunity, especially with the uh, uh, appreciating dollar and depreciating rupee. Obviously you have a huge cost arbitrage that you could leverage on. Right. So we were also looking at how do we really leverage Sri Lanka as a delivery center, innovation hub, and look at really driving our businesses overseas. So we kind of expanding operations in Middle East. We are looking at setting up operations in Southeast Asia. 
and also looking at co-innovation, uh, looking at really creating the collaborative kind of a platform where you could really look at exponential growth powered by tech and powered really by uh, certain uh, key uh, factors like innovation, uh, like even uh, crowdsourcing, right? So it's about leveraging the the uh, ecosystems and platforms rather than you having to build everything and leveraging your own assets right so it's about leveraging each other's assets so that you also manage your cost base so so that's a super approach for a private sector company for a tech firm in particular can you do you think that idea is scalable at a you know national level i i think so because say for example now so we we've kind of uh, did this for our own retail uh, business skills, right? So even when retail was going through a crisis, we saw this opportunity to create a smart retail platform. So we approached our own uh, sister company and said, let's create a smart retail platform on a co-innovation program, right? So we co-invested with the business in creating that platform so that we also saw opportunity because that then could also propel innovation for other, other markets for us and for us to create an intellectual property. Right, so for us today, co-innovation has become a huge uh, platform of creating intellectual property with partnering with customers and like-minded uh, organizations. Do you think, uh, say, industry-wide, uh, say tech industry-wide or any other industry-wide, that co-creating, co-innovating is something that Sri Lanka may find a path uh, out of this crisis through? I definitely think that's a, that's a very very promising path but unfortunately i feel a lot of the people are skeptical about collaboration because they feel uh, that their competitive advantage could get compromised right so that's uh, fair uh, i i i feel i think a lot of our shifts in terms of uh, what we are wanting to do also needs a change at a at a at a foundational level in terms sure. of philosophies and in terms of uh, basic uh, thinking, right? Because I feel the competition, what we define in the past is not relevant today, right? So today is called competition, right? You collaborate, you compete, right? It's prosumer, you produce, you consume, right? So today you could be, you could be competing in certain and you could be collaborating in certain uh, aspects, right? So I think that is what I feel that, sh that shift in terms of uh, uh, in terms of concept, would definitely augur well for Sri Lanka to come out of this. In the current context, what do you think John Keel's IT is doing to help reposition not just the company but you know the industry and and even even if possible Sri Lanka. So I think in the, in in terms of a couple of the companies that we are working with and a couple of the countries that we are in, obviously we are carrying the message saying you know obviously Sri Lanka is going through a challenging time, but it's, it has not stopped us doing business, right? And and we are still committed to the markets that we are in, and we are still up and running. And in terms of the the co advantages, co competencies we brought to the table, it's still alive, and it's it's, it's more promising than ever before, because of the uh, kind of de depreciating rupee as well. And it's it's about uh, then also looking at. How do we also give comfort in terms of also creating maybe the secondary tertiary delivery centers uh, of Sri Lanka so that if they have skepticism about we being solely in Sri Lanka, uh, could be a kind of a business continuity issue for them. So that, that is where we're also looking at ways and means of collaboration uh, to give comfort that though we are a Sri Lankan company, we are global in presence, right? So that, 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 that nuances of uh, thinking that they could have an issue in terms of business continuity if something were to happen to Sri Lanka. You know, pe people in Sri Lanka, uh, its its leaders even, uh, are apprehensive about the future and uh, potentially a little fidgety about you know what that means to careers, what that means to businesses, uh, etc. You know, how, how should companies approach uh, this uncertainty that employees are having about future? I think uh, that that's the biggest challenge, uh, Shamir. I think even even at uh, even for us, a lot of the employees have this concern about what what does future wait for them, right? What what is future for them? 
and uh, in in kind of addressing couple of these we have also kind of uh, encouraged people from our own organizations to relocate to our offices in dubai and overseas so we also looking at uh, ways and means of for them also to get involved in the growth phase of uh, exports right so that they also understand that that they will also have a better career the more that we export and also aligning them in terms of our strategy and also to contribute to it uh, in terms of uh, the co-creation in terms of product innovation because earlier we were more of a project driven organization now we're shifting towards a more product driven organization and a service driven organization so they also see that that opportunity also lends well for them in terms of a career which could span international